you ever heard about the benefits of inversions or going upside down? First, they're a good opportunity to allow the fluids in your body to go the opposite direction. So think about if you've been standing all day uh, or for long periods of time and your feet are kind of, or your ankles are kind of swelled, swelling a little bit, going upside down can help alleviate some of that swelling. Uh, it's also an opportunity to, to actually to calm down a little bit, assuming you enjoy going upside down. Getting those feet above the heart, feet above the head can have a, a calming effect on the body. In my classes and private sessions, we do often go upside down, by primarily, but primarily by taking our legs up the wall so that we're, our heads and our torsos are on the ground and our feet are up the wall. Uh, sometimes you can take your feet up and, and lay your legs on top of a coffee table or a chair. That's another way to take an inversion. Uh, you'll see in the yoga world, people taking headstands and handstands. For me, I don't have enough upper body strength to take a handstand. Uh, and, and I also need to work on my shoulder stability in order to do a handstand. Headstands, not a big fan of. The reason is, in the research that I've done, the cervical spine in your neck really isn't built <laughs> to take the weight of the body. Either your cervical vertebrae are pretty small in diameter compared to your lumbar, your low back vertebrae. So the body's pretty smart. So I don't personally like to do headstand where your head's on the ground, pressing down onto all those vertebrae in your neck, uh, or even um, a shoulder stand. So I do though like to use this little thing. It's called an inversion chair. It allows me to go completely upside down, but there's no weight on my neck. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. If you have any interest or any questions about this, please reach out to me. Um, I'd be happy to work with you on how to use this, or you can even borrow mine. So a few things to do first. One, I don't wear any socks uh, when I do this, primarily for when I come back down, I wanna be able to get a good grip onto the ground. Two, I like to put the chair on something sturdy. So this is on my mat. Three, I like to put my hair back so that it's out of my face for when I'm upside down, just so I can see a little bit better. And then lastly, I like to tuck my shirt in. Probably enough said there. All right. I am all set up here. I'm going to grip onto these uh, they're pretty cushy little handlebars here and I'm going to place my head in the open space and let my shoulders rest on the chair. I'm going to lift my knees off the ground and start to walk my toes towards the chair. And this is probably the most challenging part. This is getting up off the ground. This takes practice. This takes trust. Uh, if you were doing it for the first time, you might want to have somebody standing behind you just to guide you and hold your legs. And it's a matter of kicking up. And it doesn't have to look perfect. Maybe your feet are a little bit more like this. Feet are separated. You can experiment here. I'm not looking for, for form. I'm not a gymnast. But if you'll notice, there is absolutely no weight on my neck but I am upside down. All the weight is in my shoulders, some in my hands. And then the first time I did this, I just stayed a few seconds because that blood rushing down to your head can be kind of intense if you're not used to going upside down. If you stay here for a little while longer, a few seconds longer, you're gonna start to feel your toes kind of cool off because your blood is flowing away from your feet. And I would encourage you to breathe and spend as much time as this is, that is as comfortable for you. When you're ready to come down, my favorite way to come down is to start to bend into my knees. I'm gonna get really fancy here, but I'm not gonna get fancy right now. And I usually drop one foot and then the other. That could be because this knee is kind of cranky. <laughs> so you can experiment with that. 
Now I'm not quick to get up because I've just been upside down and all the blood, all those roads have rushed down to my head. So I want to just very gradually come back up and then pause and notice how you feel. So that's a little tutorial on how to use an inversion chair if you want to try to go upside down that way, but be very mindful and protective of your neck. If you'd like to explore more ways to go upside down in a very safe and accessible way, please do reach out to me and I would be happy to work with you.